This video is all about incredible archaeological discoveries, and we are not putting any limits on our collection apart from that. The discoveries you're about to see might be tiny, or they could be enormous. They might be from thousands of years ago, or they may have been made within the last few centuries. It's impossible to define what makes an incredible archaeological discovery. We know them when we see them, though, and when we see them, we show them to you. The ancient Egyptians built pyramids because they wanted to create glorious tombs for their rulers. We've never been quite as sure why the ancient Maya built temples, but as of September 2021, we know a little more about the one at the Mayan site of San Andres El Salvador. If scientists and archaeologists are right, it was built as a response to the eruption of the Lago Ilopango volcanic caldera. The settlement is ancient. It was founded around 2,900 years ago and grew steadily until it became the Mayan capital somewhere around the start of the 7th century. The volcanic eruption happened in the year 539 and was enormous, spraying out around 27 square miles of volcanic material. It's one of the largest eruptions in recorded global history and would have had a massive impact on the climate. To the Mayans, who were forced to abandon whole cities, it would have looked like the end of the world. Construction of the pyramid began around three years after the eruption, and the Mayan builders used chunks of volcanic material in their building project. The most likely explanation is they were attempting to guard against volcanic eruptions in the future. Thanks to a renewed focus on archaeology within Egypt, amazing discoveries are made there almost every month. This set of ritualistic tools caught the eye of experts when it was found at Tel Alfara in September 2021, and we can see why. The experts believe that the tools were made for religious purposes, and were most likely used in rituals dedicated to the great god Hathor. The connection to Hathor comes from a limestone pillar carved into the shape of the goddess, which was discovered at the same time. Tel Alafara is a site that's already known for its religious connections. It was believed to be the home of the goddess Wajit, the protector of Lower Egypt, and was first settled in the pre-dynastic period before being briefly abandoned and then settled again 2,800 years ago. Artifacts dedicated to Hathor have been found at the site before, including clay figurines and incense burners. Egyptologists are enamored with these tools because while we find the bigger signs of Egyptian faith quite regularly, their tombs, temples, and statues, the smaller tokens of their dedication are much rarer discoveries. To find them in such good condition is even rarer. You've heard of the Great Wall of China, and you might even have heard of Hadrian's Wall. But have you ever heard of the Limes Africanus? This series of defensive lines and fortifications was created as a physical border, delineating the Roman Empire's southern border in North Africa. Nobody's sure where the name comes from because the Romans aren't thought to have referred to the fortifications as Limus Africanus. Through these fortifications, the Romans could protect their coastal settlements from raids and also collect taxes on goods as they came into the empire. The oldest of the structures is thought to be the Fossa Regia, which was built after the conquest of Carthage in the year 146. Further structures were added for the next four centuries, ending with the restructuring of the Limus Tripolitanus under Emperor Justinian in 533. Today, the structures are in various stages of falling down or crumbling to dust, but they're a long-standing reminder of just how much territory the Roman Empire controlled when it was at the peak of its powers. What's the purpose of this serpent staff, and who made it? Archaeologists aren't 100% sure, but they've been having fun trying to find out since they discovered it in June 2021. The discovery was made on the shores of Raltajarvi Lake by a team from the University of Turku, working with the Finnish Heritage Agency. They believe the artifact to be around 4,400 years old, which makes it a relic of the Stone Age. Wooden artifacts wouldn't usually last such a long time in the ground, but the anaerobic conditions of the soil here lend themselves perfectly to preservation. 
The staff, which is around two feet long, was probably selected by a Stone Age craft person because the wood was already vaguely snake-shaped, but the shape was then enhanced through carving and the head was added. The current best guess of the experts is that it was a ritualistic object used by a shaman. That being said, nothing even vaguely like it from Neolithic-era Northern Europe has ever been discovered before. Because of that, the shaman theory can't be seen as anything more than a guess. Archaeologists are sometimes unfairly described as tomb raiders. They don't spend all of their time opening tombs, but it's certainly part of the job. Here's a Hispano-Visigothic grave that was opened at Ojo Gorena in Spain in September 2021. Unusually, the tomb was discovered embedded directly into the rock close to the entrance of San Bernabe Hermitage. Inside the grave, they found the skeletal remains of an adult male, with his skull held in place, gazing upwards between two limestone blocks. Archaeologists have taken a special interest in it because it appears to be a Christian burial. That's inconsistent with what historians think they know about the history of Christian worship in this part of Spain. The burial comes from the end of the 7th century, whereas Christianity isn't thought to have arrived here until several centuries later. The individual buried here was probably one of the first people to seek Hermitage here and would have lived in isolation, save for any other residents of the facility. Why his tomb was embedded directly into the rock rather than buried in a more traditional manner is another question, and archaeologists don't have a good answer for that yet. We're back on to pyramids again now, but we're still not talking about the pyramids of Egypt. Instead, we're talking about the Sedinga pyramids of Sudan. There are 80 of them, all relatively small in size, on the Sudanese side of the Nile Valley. This was once the capital of the Kingdom of Kush, and it was during that time that the Sudanese pyramids were built. There are thousands of burial chambers within the modestly sized pyramids, most of which were built between 2,400 and 1,600 years ago. Unlike their Egyptian equivalents, the design of which almost certainly inspired their construction, burial within the pyramids wasn't an honor reserved for royalty. That doesn't mean everybody could be buried here, though. Rather than limiting entry to royals only, it's likely that pyramid burials were available to anybody who had the means to pay for them. The price would likely have been very high. Other design features that these pyramids borrowed from the larger ones in Giza include their capstones with their depictions of lotuses, birds, and solar disks. The relationship between the kingdoms was strong, so perhaps the Egyptians felt that imitation was the sincerest form of flattery. Saudi Arabia, like Egypt, has been focusing on its history recently in the hope of finding more about its ancient occupants. It found precisely what it was looking for in September 2021, when scientists were able to prove that these enormous camel carvings date back to the prehistoric era. They're not just old by the standards of Saudi Arabia, they're likely to be the oldest animal reliefs of this size in the world. The carvings, which are badly weathered, were first noticed by archaeologists in 2018 and estimated to be around 2,000 years old, but the estimate was based purely on their similarity to reliefs found in Petra, Jordan. The more recent study proves that they're somewhere between 7 and 8,000 years old, which is quite a difference. There's likely to be some controversy about the findings, though, because the date was taken from tests on animal bones found at the site, rather than anything directly connected to the carvings. If the date were right, it would make these faded camels older than the pyramids of Giza and the stone circle known as Stonehenge in England. It would also mean the carvings predate the domestication of camels, which begs the question of why they were made in the first place. The ancient Peruvian structure Huacrapucara has a name that translates into English as the Horn Fortress. You only have to look at these images once to understand why. It's on a mountaintop in Cusco and is known to have been used by the Inca but is generally thought to be a pre-Inca site. In the past, it's also been known as Lamapucara, which means Fortress of Fire. 
The origin of that name is unknown and much harder to guess. Most historians agree that it was built and carved by the Quanchi, who lived here before the Inca and fought against them before being defeated and retreating to the Horned Fortress for their last stand, which was a 15-day siege ending in their defeat. From that point on, it was a place where Inca nobles lived, although it's also thought to have been used for astronomical observations and perhaps even a form of sun worship. That's what the Inca used it for though, not the Quanchi. We have no idea what the Quanchi used it for or even when they built it. For all we know, they might have found it and repurposed it just as the Inca did. Let's check out another Peruvian site while we're here. Nazca is known all over the world for the Nazca Lines, which are arguably the most famous petroglyphs on the planet, but it ought to be known just as well for Cahuachi. This pilgrimage site is enormous, and over the years it's been as popular with looters as it has with archaeologists. It's thought that this is the largest and most important ceremonial center the Nazca culture ever created, covering an area of just under one square mile and made up of 40 mounds topped by adobe structures. It was once thought that this might have been the Nazca capital, but the majority of archaeologists agree that Cahuachi had a population that came and went in accordance with religious and ceremonial events. Sometimes there would have been nobody here at all. Archaeologists have found ancient artifacts buried all over the site, along with the mummies of people who were laid to rest 1,500 years ago. But there's no rhyme or reason to the pattern or spacing of the burials. This is a mystery that we haven't yet got to the bottom of, but so are the Nazca Lines. The country that we know today as Uzbekistan was once Bactria. Unknown as it might be today, the name Bactria commanded a lot of respect 2,300 years ago during the Hellenistic period. It also drew a lot of attention from would-be conquerors, which is why the fortress of Uzundara was constructed. The fortress was lost for a very long time, but it was found again by archaeologists in August 2021 and is currently in the process of being fully excavated. Experts think it would have acted as a form of early warning system in the Boyun region of the territory, but the soldiers who manned it would also have been expected to repel any potential invaders as well as raise the alarm. To assist them, they had a triangular citadel and a thick wall with 13 watchtowers. That sounds like plenty of defensive power, but it turns out the Bactrians could have done with more. Uzundara was attacked and destroyed by barbarians about 2,170 years ago. Today, the signs of that battle can be found in the weapon and shield fragments that archaeologists have recovered from the site. What they haven't yet found are any bodies, so presumably those who fell in battle here are buried elsewhere. We're not calling Los Guachimontones a pyramid, but we know plenty of people who would. If it is a pyramid, it's a circular one, and it's thought of by many academics as the most important archaeological discovery in the history of western Mexico. You'll find it in Teochitlan, covered in grass but still clearly defined. Nobody knows who created the pyramid in Tequila Valley, but we do know that they probably finished their work somewhere around 2,200 years ago, and they lived in this part of the world until the end of the 9th century. It's remarkable that they were there for so long, and yet we don't even know their name, beyond calling them the Teochitlan culture. Shaft tombs have been found beneath some of the circular pyramids they left behind, suggesting a connection between this culture and the shaft tomb culture that first appeared here 2,500 years ago. They might even be the same people. Mesoamerican dioramas show people conducting ceremonies on poles at the top of structures like this, with leaders climbing the pole as an act of devotion to their gods while people enjoyed feasts and played musical instruments. Sounds like a fun time. There are hundreds of interesting stone monuments in Indonesia, and most of them haven't been studied as much as they should be. We'd put the Lorlindu megaliths on Sulawesi pretty close to the top of that list. 
you'll find these carved stone monuments scattered all over the Bada Valley, contained within the Lor Lindu National Park. It's thought that Sulawesi was first inhabited over 40,000 years ago, and that the island was once part of a large bridge that led to Australia and New Guinea, and allowed the human settlement of both places. Most present-day occupants of the island are descended from the Bugis people, who arrived here roughly 4,000 years ago. Not much is known of the people who lived here before the Bugis, which is a problem for archaeologists because it was those pre-Bugis people who made these monuments. They left around 400 megaliths behind, 30 of which are human-shaped figures called Arca Meniers. Their purpose is unknown. Locals connect the statues to a goddess called Pahitlida, who turns sinners into stone, but that's a case of them placing their beliefs onto artifacts created by another culture. This is surely a part of the world that deserves more attention from archaeological professionals. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!